why is it important for USVA uh, to be participating in this conference? Well, thanks again for this opportunity to um, speak with you, Bevan. But like most of the Caribbean, I should say all of the Caribbean, we're on the move where um, sustainability and the importance of sustainability to the hospitality and tourism sector is concerned. U.S. Virgin Islands sees that as paramount importance. Um, we have a few properties on both St. Thomas, St. Croix, and St. John who are focused on implementing measures to ensure that we are doing things that are necessary to preserve our beautiful, pristine waters and our environment. So that is one of the main reasons why we are focused on implementing those measures and being a part of this discourse, not just in a silo as just the U.S. Virgin Islands, but the entire Caribbean. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, the U.S. Virgin Islands in terms of its new embrace or its recent re-embrace of the Caribbean Tourism Organization. Um, how important is that uh, for the Department of Tourism? It's a definitely a huge move and one we do not take for granted. We have learned through the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, the importance of us working cohesively as a Caribbean with our brothers and sisters to ensure that we're in tandem with the measures that are necessary for us to be marketed as a Caribbean region and as a Mecca where tourism and hospitality is concerned. So definitely our integration and re-entering CTO is a very important step, a pivotal step for us to be able to re-engage conversations and to have a seat at the table to ensure that we are doing things as a unit and as, a, as unified as we possibly can with our brothers and sisters. Uh, our dear minister from Jamaica emphasizes the importance of not competition, but competition. We need to compete, collaborate, and work together as a unit who is unified in ensuring that the Caribbean as a whole is being marketed and um, that the rest of the world, which is generally our competition, we are being marketed and presented to that world stage as a Caribbean united front. Talking about that integration, uh, we are seeing some movements from the U.S. Virgin Islands government in terms of getting closer, um, not just from a CTO perspective, but at a CARICOM level. There's a move right now on looking at functional cooperation. Your thoughts, you know, being a part of this Caribbean community yourself and the Virgin Islands constituents comprising so many people from around the region, your thoughts on this synergy between U.S. VI and CARICOM? Absolutely. I think it's a great move. Um, our governor, Governor Albert Bryan, has seen the need and has not just seen the need, is continuing to act on um, taking steps, active steps necessary for us to be a part of CARICOM, even in a non-voting capacity. Um, just as mentioned as being a part of CTO, CARICOM is also an important platform for us, having a huge population in our Virgin Islands diaspora who are from varying countries within the Caribbean. So it's important for us too to have a seat at the table where we can make have discussions that are fruitful, where movement of agriculture, trade and other things are concerned, so that we too, even though we are a US territory, that we are uniquely disposed and, and positioned in the Caribbean Sea with all of our neighboring Caribbean countries that we can work collaboratively to move things, as mentioned, tourism, agriculture, trade. Those are very important sectors that we want to work cohesively as a unit and as a team with. So I think that, that is a, it's a critical move, especially when we start to consider inter-Caribbean transportation, how those affect U.S. Virgin Islands and our neighboring countries. I think it's important for us to be able to work together where those common challenges and issues are toward some resolutions and solutions. So I know, um, you know, we continue as CTO, the governor continues to have conversations with leaders to express and to reinforce that interest and why we think that USVI becoming an honorary or member in whatever capacity will prove to be an asset to CARICOM. And personally, this obviously is, is something close to you, uh, having grown up in the Eastern Caribbean, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and working with the USVI. Your personal reflections on you know, this Caribbean connection? 
Absolutely. I mean, personally, I'm a born and raised um, Vincentian who has been adopted and adopted the U.S. Virgin Islands as my home. But having experienced um, being born and raised on another island, I can personally relate and attest to some of the challenges that are experienced in that part of the Caribbean and some of the resources and, and fortunate blessings that we are able to enjoy and utilize in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So the journey, as you mentioned, the personal affinity that I have to CARICOM, Eastern Caribbean and the Caribbean um, islands are not just primarily based on my wanting, you know, to see this transcend and move in a particular direction. It's because of that personal interest and passion that I have for the Eastern Caribbean and now being a part of the greater U.S. Virgin Islands as a territory.